What is scaffolding? It is a temporary structure made of wood or steel over which construction workers can sit and carry out their duties. New construction, structural maintenance, or even a building's deconstruction necessitates the use of scaffolding. Structural members like walls and columns, among others that rise above 1.5 meters in height typically require scaffolding. Scaffolding needs to be composed of robust and solid materials to support and transport construction workers and materials placed on it. During construction, the height of the scaffolding increases as the job progresses. Components or parts of scaffolding Standards Scaffolding is supported by standards with vertical members embedded in the ground. At 2.43.0 meters in height these vertical elements are spaced apart. Put logs. Putlig is a horizontal support member that rests on ledgers. The standard length is 90 centimeters, with 1.2 meters between each one. Braces. The scaffolding is made more rigid by diagonally tying bracing pieces. Using ropes, and braces secure the poles. Ledger. The putlig is supported by this horizontal element, which runs parallel to the wall, and is firmly anchored in the standard. It has a 1.2 1.5 meters vertical spacing. Boarding. Site staff and construction materials are supported on these horizontal platforms by masons. The putt logs are able to deal with them. Railing. This is a working level rail, like a ledger. Transoms. Transoms are putt logs that have ledgers on both ends. Toe board. In order to protect the working platform, these boards are set parallel to ledgers and supported on putt logs. Bridle. It is a bridging element for a wall opening and holds the putlig at one end. Types of scaffolding. Single scaffolding, brick layer scaffolding. Standard, ledger and putlig frameworks are constructed parallel to the wall at a distance of 1.20 meters. Intervals between the standards are 2 to 3 meters. Ledgers are linked to standards at a vertical spacing of 1.2 to 1.5 intervals. Put logs are positioned on ledgers with one end towards the wall, and the other facing the floor. There are 12 to 15 meters between each transverse member. For bricklaying, this style of scaffolding is called putlick scaffolding, double, or mason scaffolding. Making holes in a stone wall to hold put logs is quite tough. More scaffolding is used in this situation. As a result, each row acts as its own vertical structure. The first and second rows are separated by 1.25 meters to 1.5 meters away from the wall respectively with a distance of 20 minus 40 centimeters between them. Both frames can then support putt logs. Rakers and cross bracing are attached to this structure in order to make it even more sturdy and secure. Independent scaffolding is a term for this type of construction. Cantilever or needle scaffolding. The following situations necessitate the employment of a cantilever or needle. The ground isn't strong enough to hold up the weight of the standards. To carry out the upper half of the wall, as in, the space near the wall must be kept clear for pedestrians and other vehicular traffic. Suspended scaffolding. Scaffolding is hung from a building's roof by wires and chains. The platform can be lifted and lowered as needed using a lever or electronic system. Scaffolding like this is frequently used by people in the painting, window cleaning, and repair industries. Trestle scaffolding. This type of scaffolding is utilized for repairing or painting work within a room that is no more than 5 meters high. Tripods, ladders and other wheeled apparatus are used to aid the working platform. Steel scaffolding. Steel scaffolding is made out of steel supports that are fastened together using couplers. Scaffolding of this sort is quick and easy to put together and take apart. Structurally sound and fire resistant, this style of scaffolding is superior to other options. Patented scaffolding. Typically, patented steel scaffolding is quite a popular type of scaffolding. Structural scaffolding, such as this one, is made up of a variety of unique couplings and frames. Scaffolding materials. Scaffolding is commonly constructed from steel and aluminium. Since it is so strong and long-lasting, steel is the material of choice for scaffolding. Scaffolding that is made of steel has a certain level of flexibility, which helps keep it free of cracks. As a result, steel is an excellent material for moving large amounts of equipment and supplies. Steel is a must for tall scaffolding constructions because it provides the strength only steel can. 
Scaffolding design. Scaffolding design includes the safety of the site operatives or users, and it should be designed with full care and accuracy. The design of the scaffolding must consider the following points. The supporting structure must be strong, stable, and rigid enough to support the weight of the vehicle. The safety of those involved in the scaffold's construction, modification, and dismantling the safety of those who use the scaffold, and the safety of those who are in the scaffold's immediate vicinity. To design a scaffold, you need the following information. The site's exact location. Date by which the scaffolding will be put up for the project. Scaffolding's intended purpose. Length and height. Workloads at their heaviest point. What kind of structure is surrounding it, etc. Potential hazards and risks of scaffolding's applications. As the height of the scaffolding rises, so does the danger it poses. More than 65% of construction operatives normally use scaffolds, according to research. Scaffolding accidents occur often, according to numerous reports. Falls from scaffolding are caused by guardrails that are not correctly installed. Scaffolding collapsed owing to an error in construction. Falling scaffold material exposes the surrounding area to dangers. Electrifying risks resulting from a lack of preparation. Slips and falls are common on boards of wood. Platforms are becoming overburdened. Scaffolds that move. As a result, it is recommended that the scaffolding be inspected each day before construction begins. I hope the video provides you with a sound understanding of scaffolding, its uses types and various associated features. Please feel free to like, share, and comment.